It comes just a day after some of the worst rioting in London in nearly 30 years, which left families homeless and businesses destroyed. Lorna Ramsey reports. This is what the looters left behind. But it's the businesses that are left counting the cost. One shopkeeper who didn't want to be identified told me how he felt when he saw his internet cafe looted. I cried, I'll tell you. I cried because the amount of effort that, that's been put into that business and just to lose it one morning, it's terrible. This is what's left of a post office, a jewellers and a hairdressers. Not only have people lost their businesses, but those living in the flats above have lost their homes as well. It's just, you know, reinforcing the stereotype of North London being a ghetto and somewhere there's no hope and it's not true. The trouble started hours after a peaceful protest over the fatal shooting of 29-year-old Mark Duggan by police on Thursday. The family is clear this was not what they wanted. They wanted a resolve, they wanted answers, but they didn't want destruction. But destruction is what happened and it will take a long time for Tottenham to recover. Uh, travellers at Europe's uh, largest illegal traveller site are this morning uh, waking up in familiar surroundings after winning a temporary reprieve from eviction. Yeah, that's been put off until uh, Friday at least with every delay. The cost to the taxpayer continue to rise. Lorna Ramsey reports. Dale Farm is here to stay beyond Friday. Another delay, another added cost for the taxpayer. This eviction was going to cost £18 million, but it's rising day by day. People living nearby say the money could be better spent elsewhere. We could use that money for the NHS. I mean, I work at the Basildon Hospital. That would be very useful. They should be evicted because it's illegal to be there, but spending that much money is ridiculous. But the travellers say evicting them could cause more problems and cost more money in the long run. They're wasting about 18 million to do this, but they're just, you know what they're doing? They're just spending money foolishly because they're not going to vanish. They're not going to go anywhere. Like, where else are they supposed to go? It's taken 10 years of legal battles to get to this stage, and this last minute injunction is just another example of the twists and turns of life here at Dale Farm. The travellers and activists may be delighted at the news, but for people living nearby, the feeling couldn't be more different. Kim Gandhi lived in Craze Hill for six years, but moved away because of the stress. For her, the eviction is worth every penny. The whole thing has been a horrible experience. The, these people obviously do not want to integrate. They want to have everything on their terms. And the people of Craze Hill and the surrounding area are the ones paying it. We are picking up the tab. Basildon Borough Council will put its case to the High Court on Friday. It says it's confident the hearing will go their way. Thank you. As we heard in the news, bailiffs are making final preparations to clear the Dale Farm Traveller site in Essex. A few of the 400 people who have been living illegally on the site left overnight, but those remaining say they will resist eviction. Lorna Ramsey watched as they prepared their barricades. Shame on you! Shame on you! The Traveller's message to the Prime Minister. The eviction of families living at Craze Hill near Basildon is now fast approaching, but they insist they're not going anywhere. I have a caravan, so I'm going to train myself to the caravan and my daughter will be in, in the caravan. Do You will see a lot of that is going to happen where we're going to be minding our caravans. 2,000 supporters have joined the travellers. They say they'll offer non-violent resistance despite reports they're waging war against the authorities. I really hope it isn't inevitable that violence will occur here. If the bailiffs come in fighting hard, they may well meet some resistance. You know, people are very frightened and people behave in all sorts of ways when they're frightened. There's been 10 years of legal wrangling after travellers bought a former scrapyard on Greenbelt land and built on it. Many of the travellers say they've put all their valuables into caravans and driven them here onto the legal part of the site. But they say that doesn't mean they've admitted defeat. More than a dozen families have left on their own accord, but some have vowed to return to protect their chalets and land. There's going to be people resisting them because there's nowhere to go. They're trying to make a stand because this is our last hour. This is our last hour. We have no other choice. A meeting between Basildon Council and the Travellers was cancelled last night. 
The council says it's concerned that outside activists have hijacked the situation. Well, in the second part of her exclusive report from Cyprus, Lorna Ramsey looks now at the impact the case had on the island and hears the parents' story. This is the date Georgia and Michelagi Papiri's lives changed forever. Their teenage son Christos was killed when a car crashed into the moped he was riding on. His death has resulted in three men from Essex serving prison sentences for his manslaughter. But Christos' parents feel they're serving a sentence of their very own. When we've lost Christo, my husband says the whole world went dead. And this is how our life is now. It's black. Um, it's very terrible to lose a son. He wasn't sick. He didn't do anything wrong. It is very, it's very bad. It's very, very hard. And it's very hard for my husband. This road in Protoras, near the resort of Ayanapa, is where Christos lost his life more than three years ago. His friend Mario Dimitrio, who was driving the moped, was seriously injured. This is the shrine that Christos Paparis's family have left at the scene of the crash. When Christos was knocked off his bike, he hit this lamppost and later died from his injuries. Good evening and welcome to Anglia News. Tonight, tributes to two builders crushed by a collapsing wall. The verdict's in after a tragic death in our skies. And why is this football team thinking pink? More details are emerging after two builders were killed when a barn wall collapsed on top of them. The accident happened in Whirlingworth near I yesterday. The men were converting a barn off Shop Street when the gable end fell down, crushing them both. Serena Sandu reports. Is with the twins and their mum in Norfolk this morning. Uh, amazing story this one, isn't it, Laura? Yes, good morning, Dan. This is the home of Henry Hughes and his twin sister, Rebecca. They're only six years old, but they've been dealing with an illness in a way that's well beyond their years. Not only do they have this award to celebrate, but they've recently organised a golf day which raised £15,000 for the Drover Syndrome UK, which helps people with Rebecca's condition.